Had the people what up? Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, Lamar Jackson, and also, could someone design a good-looking Panthers jersey? Let's get right to it. Quarterback talk. Nothing really happening since the pro days of Will Levis, Bryce Young, and CJ Stroud. That is not in the order uh, of quarterbacks that I want to be with the Carolina Panthers. Uh, I just had to mention Will Levis because it happened. Was there a lot of buzz after? No. Uh, but let's talk about how people have been speaking of the cj struds and the bryce youngs of the world right now and it seems like just based on my dms and what i'm seeing on the twitter machine is that there's the slander cj stroud crew and then there's the slander bryce young crew and to be honest we're in a great position that the carolina panthers could take either one and it's really at this point we're we're picking nits we are nitpicking all over the place of which quarterback we want right now and according to joe person from the athletic the Panthers don't even know which quarterback they want right now. In fact, they don't want to know. General Manager Scott Fitterer told Joseph Person they're also the over at the owners' meeting in Arizona, saying that nobody knows which quarterbacks that each of the big head honcho decision makers actually want. Fitterer outwardly told Joe Person that he told Frank Reich that he doesn't want to know which quarterback that he likes until they are done the process, and that process being going to all the pro days. They still got to go to Florida quarterback Anthony Richardson's pro day. That's later this week in Gainesville. And then after that, they're going to have the individual uh, meetings in Charlotte on Men Street. They're not going to be doing workouts. They're basically just going to be doing meetings because they already saw the tape. They got more than enough tape. Uh, they saw them at the combine. They saw them at the pro day workouts. There really is nothing to gain from those personalized private workouts at the bank. And so they're basically just meeting them again, maybe doing some scheme fit all that stuff, how they fit with the culture at Bank of America, so at least the culture that they're trying to build. So as we nitpick between CJ Stroud and Bryce Young, because that's all really we can do right now, because there's no news between uh, now and the draft in Kansas City, who the Carolina Panthers are taking, we are just picking this. We are nitpicking all over the place. And the number one thing that I'm reading right now on the Twitter machine, listening to it uh, in podcasts, whether it's, you know, Chris Sims on Buttons, whether it's Move the Sticks podcast with DJ and Bucky, whether it's a, you know, great Twitter analyst follows like Natalie Miller. She does great work on NFL Draft Wire. You know, it, it seems to be both guys are good. CJ Stroud and Bryce Young are good. I think Bucky Brooks said that, you know, CJ Stroud uh, is more like a Clay Thompson type, you know, prototypical, prototypical size for an NBA player slash NFL player. Absolute textbook shot, textbook pass. You know, in a clean pocket, he is absolutely automatic, fluid, smooth. Bryce Young is more like Steph Curry. And that's, and that's something we're seeing a lot. You know, Dane Parson from the Draft Network at DP underscore NFLs kind of, kind of compared him to Chris Paul, also an undersized point guard, where, you know, not exactly the prototypical size. Steph Curry, definitely not. Uh, but they do find ways to make plays. And that's how I would compare these guys as well. So if you want to start a franchise, which... The Panthers aren't really, but it's kind of like a soft reload with a brand new quarterback. Would you want to start a franchise with, you know, textbook Clay Thompson or, you know, Steph Curry, who is a playmaker, but doesn't really fit those prototypical sizes. And so when it comes to the playmaking ability, Natalie Miller brought up a stat talking about, you know, how each of the quarterbacks fare in a clean pocket and against a pressurized pocket. I just made that term up. I don't know if it makes any sense. But basically, when it comes to a clean pocket, CJ Stroud has a better QB rating. But when it comes to being under pressure, Bryce Young, far and away, has a better rating than C.J. Stroud. And in my opinion, in the NFL, defensive coordinators and defensive players, they get paid a lot of money too. And after the first year, or after the first couple games, actually, they start to figure you out. They're not just going to let you get Rookie of the Year. They're going to make it hard on you. You know, Bill Belichick, notoriously hard on rookie quarterbacks. And so it's inevitable that you are going to get pressure in the NFL, in the pocket. Are you going to be able to manage? And according to the stats and what they've done in college, Bryce Young is able to do that, whether it's whatever he does before the snap or you know after the snap and just being able to maneuver around. And that's something that Scott Fitter talked about with Joe Person, the fact that you know it's not like Bryce Young used to be 6'5 and got you know into a car crash and suddenly knocked down to 5'10". He's always been short. So he just naturally found a way to maneuver around the pocket, find those throwing lanes to find the open guy in the middle of the field, arguably the toughest place to pass the ball as a rookie. And so the fact that he is already in tune with playing with pressure and he can make plays in big games, whether it's Texas or LSU uh, or against Georgia, like I would put at this point, because it's a, it's a moving thing. I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not set in stone. I, I, I've been set in stone by saying that we're in a great position, that we can get C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young. But if you had to pick some nits, it's 
Bryce Young can make plays under pressure, which he is going to face in the NFL. CJ Stroud has a shorter resume with that. Sure, he played amazing under pressure against the best defense in the in, in college football and the semifinal in the college football playoff against Georgia, but Bryce Young has just done it longer. It's it's kind of like his 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 calling card, kind of like what we mentioned before, you know, Bucky Brooks and Movie Stick saying he's the Steph Curry type, you know, he can make plays, he can do things out of the ordinary, crazy superstar stuff. But, you know, Clay Thompson, also a champion, also really good, also would be a star on a team. Who would you rather on your squad? It's it's based on your taste. Hearing Nick Saban talk about during the pro day that was on NFL Plus that Bryce Young is in the film room, you know, a day before the coaches. And then by Wednesday, he kind of already knows what the opposition does, what their tendencies are defensively, and he's kind of like a coach on the field. You're not hearing as many stories about that when given the opportunity about C.J. Stroud. You're just not. Like Ryan Day had the opportunity. They had the same cast and crew over in Columbus for his pro day, and you didn't hear anything, any clips like that, say that, you know, C.J. Stroud, you know, first guy in, last guy out, you know, leader on the team, dissects the defense before the coaches even get a chance to dissect the defense, you know, just way ahead of the game. And when you hear about rookies that fail in the NFL, it's all about what they do in the film room. Uh, I was told that that's what made Cam Newton great. He was great in the film room and, you know, dedicated to that crap. Not saying she's a seizure child is not. I'm just saying that what we're hearing is that Bryce Young, that's just the way he is. At this moment in late March, that's where I'm leaning is Bryce Young because I think he does have that franchise CEO aura about him. Uh, there was, a, if you listen to Locked On Panthers podcast with our man, Julian Council, love that guy. One of the first guests, I, I think the first guest uh, I had on Panthers Post, uh, he had the beat writer for Locked On Alabama football podcast. And this guy's covered them all. You know, he's covered the Jalen Hurts, the Mac Jones, the Tua Tonga Bailoa. Probably wasn't around during uh, Joe Namath time, but he says he ranks Bryce Young as the number one quarterback in Alabama Crimson Tide football history. He's not saying he rents, you know, rates him number one overall in Kent State football quarterback history. He's talking about Alabama, the Alabama Crimson Tide football team. This guy rates Bryce Young as number one overall on that list. And compare that to the beat writer for Locked on Ohio State Buckeyes football podcast who also spoke to Julian Council. I highly recommend you listen to both of those or watch them. They're on YouTube. Um, he said it's not a it's not a done deal that CJ Stroud walks into Bank of America Stadium if drafted first overall and, and and is the starter. He might need some time. I feel more confident after hearing from these, you know, these these guys who cover the teams every single day and not these NFL guys who cover it just during draft season because the draft is over, uh, because the Super Bowl is over. I trust these guys. And just hearing from both, it seems like Bryce Young should be the guy, but will that actually happen? I don't know enough draft talk this is kind of draft talk but let's talk merch you know i love merch i literally went on the twitter machine at panthers post number one asked you guys should i buy this hat i did and i'm kind of glad that i did it was 50 percent off but also the panthers and the rest of the nfl released their draft caps and to be honest i'm into the 90s stuff right now as you could probably tell with the hoodie and all this jazz it's kind of 90s-esque uh, would I rather the bill be black than baby blue? Yes. But it's kind of got that cheesiness to it. It's not trying to take itself too seriously. Rumored supposed new jerseys. Now, while I was down in South Carolina for vacation, I did go on the Panthers Pro Shop, which I tend to do because I have no life. And I noticed that, you know, guys who are still on the team, like Brian Burns, Jeremy Chin, you know, all these guys had their jerseys cut down by like 40%, like 40 60 dollars i was like what is going on is this like a this is like an nfl thing it's kind of kind of quiet season when i get you know rile up some business buy some jerseys but then i looked at you know the cleveland browns i looked at the pittsburgh steelers i looked at the patriots and all their jerseys were at full price and i was just thinking that's interesting and like two percent of them are thinking are they trying to get rid of this stock because they're going to replenish it right before the draft with a new jersey? Which then prompted everybody who knows how to use Photoshop, not me, to then post their concepts for Panthers jerseys. And man, they've been bad. Like they've been really bad. Like I, I wish I knew how to use Photoshop better. If someone's out here who knows how to use Photoshop can hit me up on the comments or on Twitter at Panthers Post number one, DM me. Uh, maybe you can put into 
pictures, my idea what a good Panthers jersey is. Ba basically, this is what I need from a new Panthers jersey if this is happening. And this is an all-uniform thing. You can't just have a jersey and then just a horrible helmet. You end up looking like the Jacksonville Jaguars. But keep the black helmets. That's just what's up. What we got right now with the silver and all that, have that as a throwback. Replace the current logo with the old-school 90-95 logo. Put that aside. That is now the throwback Panthers logo. Keep the black helmets all the time. Your home kit should be either the Carolina blue and then whatever pants, whether it's white, ditch silver, no more silver. And then either white pants, black pants, whatever. That's it. So black, blue, black, black, blue, white, black, blue, blue, whatever. On the road, black, black, blue, black, black, white, black, black, whatever. Great. And then, or, or black, white, blue, black, white, blue, black. That is all good to me. Just black helmet. Keep it black. That's just the way it is. It should not be white. I'm seeing all these white concepts. Panthers are not white. Even leopards, who are kind of panthers. If you look at the, if you look at panthers, they got spots, kind of like a leopard. Leopards are not white. There's a snow leopard, but there's there's no snow. There's no snow in the Carolinas. If there is, people people slip on the highways and it's gross. So it's black helmets, no white helmets. Get away, get away, get away from me with the black, uh, with the white helmets, just, just go away, okay? And so, black helmets. And for the jerseys themselves, things that would change. The stripes, they make no sense. They Sometimes they go all the way around, sometimes they're just on the top. Uh, the numbers on the shoulders, sometimes they're this big, sometimes they're that big. Get rid of the numbers on the shoulders. Maybe have no numbers on the shoulders. And then just have the logo on the, on the sleeve. Maybe, because the Carolina Panthers owner also owns a soccer team, maybe have a crest. Maybe a new kind of crest. The Baltimore Ravens have a crest or used to have a crest on their shoulders. I think that's kind of sharp. Maybe you have the Panthers logo on one side, uh, a new kind of Carolina Panthers crest on the other. I don't know. Uh, if you are going to have numbers, keep it consistent. Not small, not big, just nice and big ones, and then get rid of the stripe. I don't want scratch marks. That's too basic. We all think about Panthers. We think scratching, no more scratches. I don't want scratches. I just want just if you're going to do stripes, have them just cover the top. Don't They don't need to go all around. And have the numbers in the front look fast. These the, the numbers that the Panthers have on their jerseys right now are like standard football jerseys from 1909 to now. That is the number font that they get. Maybe something a bit faster. I don't know what. Maybe maybe a bit more angled. Maybe a bit more pointed. You know, you're going to be getting a dynamic quarterback, whether it's Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud. It needs to match their style. Uh, if it's a blue jersey, I don't mind the look of black numbers. Uh, I think the University of North Carolina does a great job with that. Um, it could be white. White looks it's pretty good. It's probably better for broadcasters, to be honest. From reading up high, you can't really tell the numbers if they're blue or black. But blue and black, I think, looks really good. Um, but that's kind of how it, it wouldn't have to be much. Oh, the pants, the stripe, figure that out, figure that out. Cause that stripe is like, it's like thick and it kind of curves to one side. It doesn't make any sense. If anything, you should like, it just, it just shouldn't happen. It just shouldn't be there. It shouldn't be, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't continue anything from the Jersey down to the pants, but the pants got to figure that stuff out as well. Maybe that's where you put the maybe, scratches on the legs. Maybe. Um, but that's how I visualize it. So if you're a graphic person and you know how to do this kind of stuff, talk to me. Let's figure that out. So yeah, let me know what you think. Are you are, are, are you are you wavering on the CJ Stroud or Bryce Young camp? Which one are you? And uh, are you a Lamar guy? Are you someone like, you know what? Lamar is a proven commodity. Despite the injuries, we know what we get out of him. You know, MVP, passing leader, all that stuff. Bring them on. We don't care. We have to pay them money. Uh, and also, concept jerseys, as I said before, let me know if you see some good ones. Send them my way. I'll let you know. And uh, would you pay full price for a brand new jersey? Or would you pay the discounted price for a jersey that's a bit dated, but still good? Let me know in the comments below. I appreciate you guys. Like, subscribe, spread the word. See you soon.